Hey everyone, Sam Brief here with another Cougar Chat. And today I'm joined by head men's golf coach, Mark Haynes. Coach Haynes, what's up? Hey, just doing great in the office, catching up on some paperwork, uh, getting our gear and uh, uniforms ready, uh, you know, when we get the, the green light to go. Yeah, and you got your green shirt in preparation for the green light, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coach, you're a golf lifer. Your dad played golf. You played golf your whole life. Your kids play golf. What has this sport meant to you? Well, basically, as a young kid, um, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money as a family. So the only way I really got into golf, um, besides hitting balls in the forest preserve and putting in between the gangways, is uh, caddied at Olympia Fields Country Club. She had two older siblings that also caddied. And um, my first round of golf was at Olympia Fields Country Club when I was uh, in sixth grade. Uh, golf has just been a very important part of our family, as well as uh, all sorts of sports. As my dad, uh, a really unique story, he played college basketball and college golf at the University of Richmond. So as a young lad growing up, uh, my dad also refereed for 52 years. Um, so we just had a lot of sports in our family. And uh, golf uh, with caddying and just growing up playing golf uh, just became an integral part of our family. And then later on in life, uh, you know, I had an opportunity uh, to get a basketball scholarship to Illinois Institute of Technology, played on their golf team. I was actually a player coach for two seasons when the head coach uh, took his two-year sabbatical. So uh, that's probably unheard of in college sports today, but my uh, what would have been my junior and senior year, I was a player coach. And then I stayed on for one more year uh, when I was in grad school. And then uh, my kids play golf, belong to a country club. And then in 2006, ended up uh, investing in a golf course in my local town uh, where I lived, uh, which I still have. So yeah, golf is a big part of our family. A player coach in college. I've definitely never heard of that. Must have been a growing experience for you. Well, it was awesome. My athletic director, a gentleman by the name of Ed Glancy from IIT, which uh, they've named the baseball field after him. Uh, if you watch uh, the Field of Dreams, they use that field for their practices. That's but, my favorite um, movie. Yes. Yeah, mine too. Mine too. I cry at the end every time. Me baby. too. When he yeah. says, hey, Dad, yeah. want to have a catch? Yeah. Yeah. So um, basically, yes. You know, uh, as a player coach, uh, went into the AD's office. He handed me the meal money, the money to pay the uh, greens fees. Uh, I drove the van. Uh, we uh, went from IIT out to a golf course in LaGrange called uh, Tim Timbers Edge. And uh, we were part of what was called the CCAC conference with DePaul, Iola, Chicago State. Uh, was in our conference. Uh, we had uh, St. Francis, Lewis. It was a fun, we played match play back then. Uh, but being an engineering school, we were always grappling to make sure we got uh, six guys out to our tournaments because uh, school obviously is a little more important than sports back in the 70s. So it was fun. It's a great experience. How does your mindset have to change coaching golf versus playing golf? Well, basically, from a coach's point of view, I, I feel like I'm a player's coach. I feel like the key to playing good golf is, is enjoying the game for what it is. So as a coach, I really try to make things fun, try to make things very simple for my players. Players put enough stress on themselves when they play the game as it is. So my feeling as a coach is if you're comfortable, you're happy, you're feeling good, you look good, you eat well, you practice well. When you go into a tournament, you're, you're prepared, ready to move forward to enjoy the five or six hours. Well, actually, we play 36 holes on Mondays and 18 on Tuesdays, so sometimes we're looking at 14, 15-hour days. Is 
you got four to five years to play the sport you love. I want my players to enjoy every event, every practice, everything that we do. I want to make sure when they graduate here from Chicago State that they have good memories of playing underneath myself as the coach and Chicago State as the university that they're going to represent. Now, the last few months have challenged you as a coach and challenged all of us with the COVID situation. How have you been communicating and navigating it with your team? I feel bad for my kids. Last year, we played one event in the spring. We set all the school records. We had school low rounds, school three-day totals. My kids busted their butts from the day they got on campus. And since I was fortunate enough to get the job here in August, they worked hard in the weight room. They practiced hard. They, they, they were a team. And basically in the winter, they were hitting balls every day at a heated range that we could practice at. And then we went to uh, Alabama, the Robert Jones Trail, played some great golf. And, you know, once again, we, we, we show vast improvement from when we got started a year ago fall. And then, you know, two days before we're ready to go to Houston for our spring trip, you know, COVID occurred, uh, season basically canceled. Kids went to e-learning, which was a big uh, adjustment to them because golf season basically Saturday, Sunday, we're traveling or practice round. We're playing 36 on a Monday, 18 on a Tuesday, optional day off on, on Wednesday, practice Thursday, Friday again. We're generally off on Saturday. So, you know, for the two to three month period during the fall and the spring season, my guys, that's all we're doing is, is studying and playing golf. I just feel bad for my players. Uh, this year I have uh, three to four seniors. And, uh, you know, half their, well, half their season was taken away last year and half their season taken away this year. So God willing, come springtime that uh, our conference and basically, uh, you know, Chicago State opens up the doors and we can continue uh, our golf season. Yeah, fingers crossed. Certainly hoping that for you and your team, Coach. Correct. Let's finish out with a lightning round. How's that sound? I'm ready. Let's go. How do you like your steak cooked? I am medium rare. Me too, my friend. There you go. Your favorite pro golfer? My favorite pro golfer? Hmm. I don't have one. To tell you the truth, there's nobody that I particularly follow. I tend to like the underdog. Uh, I like to see the the guy uh, that comes from nowhere uh, and, and compete. So I, I'm sort Fair of enough. an under underdog guy, but I have no favorite golfer. Whoever the dog is. Speaking of dogs, do you have any pets? Unfortunately, uh, my dog, which the greatest dog name of all time, Divot, uh, passed away about uh, seven months ago. We have not replaced the dog. But my daughter has a dog named uh, Waverly, um, named after uh, she studied abroad at the University of Edinburgh. So when my daughter and her uh, husband take off, we, uh, we bring Waverly to the Haynes Resort. Also a very nice name. Yeah, Waverly, great dog. Um, coach, on a scale of one to 10, how good of a cook are you? I can grill. I'm not a very good cook. Uh, just, you know, with owning the golf course, I generally tend to eat there pretty much every day. And with my kids all grown and gone, um, I'm just a grill guy at best. I consider myself a, probably a nine on the grill and probably about a three in the kitchen. Okay, well, we'll keep you outside on the grill then. That's awesome. <laughs> just got a new grill for Father's Day for my lovely wife, so that's awesome. That's a, that's a hell, of, hell of a gift, especially if you're a nine on the grill. Uh, yeah, being married to me, it's a, it's a gift. <laughs>
Next question. If you could move to any planet in our galaxy, what planet would you move to? I'm going to say the moon only because uh, was it Armstrong or Shepard hit a shot on the moon? So uh, <laughs> my, uh, my, it was that, what would that be? The, what would be the study of the stars? Uh, astrology. Astrology. Well, um, never had astrology was not good with geography. So if you had to ask me the other planets, uh, uh, I'm not going to do well. So we're going with the moon. Okay, so you're not going all the way out to like Neptune and Uranus. You're sticking right here. <laughs> uh, I couldn't name the seven or eight planets that are out there right now. So All right, well, I, I, I won't quiz you. Yeah, that's good. Lastly, what's your dream car? My dream car? Mm -hmm. Well, I had my dream car in 19, 1966 Mustang. It was my first car that I, I purchased and uh, had it for quite some time. And my wife will probably kill me on this one, but got married, still had my 66 Mustang, really wasn't using it much. Um, so we need to buy some furniture for the house. So I sold my 66 Mustang. But the beauty is, is that we still have that furniture. So I get to look <laughs> at my Mustang every day. It's the 66 Mustang in furniture form now. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, at some point in life, I will purchase another Mustang as a uh, second car, but I, I'm not a big car guy. I, I buy a new car every 10 years and I drive it until it says, uh, ever hold my peace, amen. <laughs> well, Coach, thank you very much for joining me. Oh, it was awesome. I just love my job here at Chicago State. I am super psyched to get our program moving in the right direction. Second year uh, being a Cougar and looking for some really positive things to happen out there on the golf course and in the classroom with my team. Certainly. Same here. Appreciate the time. All right. Awesome. See everybody later. Go Cougars.